Hello, everybody. This is C.J. Wiley with my adventures on the road. I'm on the way to a lesson, but I'm on a uh, Highway 35 south of Fort Worth, and it's just like bumper to bumper traffic. So, thought I'd take this opportunity to to share a really awesome experience I had last night. Um, a man, Tony, got a hold of me to uh, to go work with his son, Gavin. And I really didn't know at the time what I was getting into. Gavin is nine years old and uh, probably the most talented, like raw talent that I've seen. I, you know, when I was nine years old, I ran two racks in a row playing eight ball on a nine foot table. And, uh, you know, when I was 12, I won my first tournament and beat all the adults and and won the national high school championships pretty uh, easily when I was 18. So, you know, I was a child prodigy. But I have to admit, I don't think I could have beat Gavin. He ran three racks in a row playing 10 ball. You know, when they told me that, at first I really didn't believe it. I mean, I didn't think they were lying. I just, it was just shocking. Like a nine-year-old kid, <laughs> you know, ran three racks of 10 ball. Cause I flashed back to when I was that age and I was thinking, you know, see, I grew up playing rotation, 15 ball rotation. And the first time I broke and ran all 15 balls in rotation, I was 12. But I don't, you know, so I would say breaking and running a rack of rotation is probably equivalent to uh, three racks of 10 ball. But uh, I was 12 and he's nine. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they wanted me to show him some of the, you know, advanced fundamentals that I show that I learned in uh, Canada that they really changed my life and, and gave me a whole another level of consistency because it allowed me to go up to every shot and put the, uh, the, you know, the connection in the center of my chest and go down and shoot out of the center of my chest, center of my vision. And there's no better way to look at anything. It's like shooting a pistol. You know, I've worked with, uh, a lot of, you know, Pistol marksmen, you know, I mean, I've worked with people with Homeland Security and Department of Defense and and lots of, uh, you know, military guys that uh, that are high level, uh, you know, pistol shooters. And when I show them that that what I teach is exactly like shooting a pistol out of the center of their chest, because they're all taught that. Plus, they have an advantage that, that one of the stances, and I don't know the name, they have a name for it. Is very similar to the stance required to be able to go down on the ball and shoot it out of the, the center of your vision. Uh, Efren does it. Bustamante does it. Shane Van Boning. You know, once it's brought to your attention, you start seeing these professional players. You'll see them in a different, uh, in a different way. Like uh, one of the rules of thumb I go by is we can only recognize what we're familiar with. So once you're familiar with something, you can see it. And I've shown, you know, I've got a lot of different analogies. And uh, uh, one of my favorite ones was uh, when I was shown some mark cards, I could not see the mark. And I had just about perfect eyesight, but that didn't matter. And the guy that showed it to me said that if I don't know where it's at, there's no way I can see it. But here's where it got kind of bizarre at the time. When he showed me where that mark was, from that point on, when he showed me a card, my eyes went to that mark, and it was tiny. <laughs> and uh, and I could see the mark as well as I could see the card. It That, that was a wake-up call for me. And in life, uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's it's really tapping into the subconscious. So, uh, you know, I, I showed Tony and, and Gavin uh, 
you know, how this all works. And, and really, you know, a lot of it, like the first hour of my lesson is a lot really explaining the philosophy of what uh, is required to be able to do this because it's different than what everybody's accustomed to. And uh, I also check their alignment so that they can see exactly where they're at right now. And Because uh, most people don't know they're out of line. I say most. I, I really think I could say all. I don't think I've uh, taught anybody yet that knew how far out of line they were because our eyes have the ability to make an adjustment about three or four inches. It's like a peripheral vision, but it's it's if you're on a on the line of of the uh, pool shot, you can stand three or four inches to the left, and your eyes will still tell you that you're on that line, but you're if you if you really check it out, you know, uh, you're lined up on your right shoulder, or your right foot, or your right hip. There, there's basically that makes a straight line, and you know the you know the the right shoulder and the eyes are going to be three or four inches apart because your you know your chest is going to be slightly turned. To to learn this, I I recommend uh, you know you can stand perf- almost perfectly square, just like you're talking to somebody. And not only can you see things better like that, but you can connect to things better like that. Again, like shooting a pistol, you want to get square and shoot right out of the center of your vision. And and when you get really good at that, you know, I shoot a bow too. It's the same type thing where uh, you can feel like where the bullet's hitting the target or where the arrow's hitting the target or, in this case, uh, where the cue ball is hitting the target. And what it allows you to do when you get your alignment right is uh, only use two alignment positions. I just start out center to center for all of the shots, all the way up to a center to edge, which would be a half a ball hit. Then my eyes won't go any farther than that in that peripheral state. So I have to then go to center to edge. Then my eyes can see all of the cut shots. So I'm aligning the same way every day, every hour, uh, you know, and that is where you get the incredible consistency. Because most people are trying to line up on the shot line, which is different every shot. What I'm doing is the same every shot, and then as I've described before, I triangulate the angle. And uh, and that's utilizing what most people are, are using that gift that they have with their eyes, they're kind of wasting it because they're standing three or four inches off the line and using the ability of their eyes uh, in a way that's kind of artificial. It creates an illusion. But once you get on the line where you really are, then you can use that ability you have with your eyes to make every single pool shot. And there's only four angles off center, which one of them straight in. So there's only really three angles and then there's four angles off uh, the centered edge one of them is centered edge and then you know the angle the other three angles uh, not only are the same but like if you just looked at the angle of the pool cue they're the same to create the angles off center to center as they off they are center to edge so that reduces it down to really there's only three angles that I have to be able to create with my cue, which is also relative to, to what we, what you'd call the shot line. There's only three. So I've reduced it down and that's how I was able to uh, go into these zones and play hours and hours and hours and make every ball without aiming. Cause I just felt the angle, but if my alignment wasn't as I'm describing it wouldn't have been possible. I used to stumble on this when I was young. Like uh, Gavin uh, last night, see, he's purely instinct, you know. So, you know, his father, uh, you know, knew, and I think he knows uh, that he made a good decision now because he's starting to process, I'm sure, today what I showed them. But he got it. And if Gavin at this age of nine years old, combines his natural instinct and talent with this uh, 
physical fundamental technique that I'm just describing. That combination right there, I would say, could possibly enable him to be the best player uh, in the world, you know. And I, I did a, we shot a video of him, and I'm going to post that here in a little bit. I don't have time right now. Like I said, I'm driving to this lesson to uh, work with a guy for four hours to show him this stuff. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll post it later tonight. And I had him run a rack of uh, shooter dare. So it's six balls in rotation uh, on a nine-foot table. Because I played the game with him. See, and, and the shooter dare game is designed, and it took me a lifetime to do this. I mean, I, I had this, uh, I made my first video about shooter dare seven years ago. And I still haven't shown it to, but maybe, I don't know, five, maybe ten people. So I've been keeping this to myself and uh, just waiting for the right opportunity to release it to to the the public and and I'm doing it in a in kind of a calculated way. We're, we're our first big tournament is going to be the middle of July, and it looks like it'll be in Philadelphia. I'm I'm just ironing out the details, so it ha hasn't been totally confirmed. But they are also wanting to do like eight qualifying tournaments around that area, and then I'm going to use the uh, Dallas Fort Worth area to do probably the second big tournament. We're, we're planning on doing one big tournament, like 128 player field um, a month. And then uh, we're going to divide the country in sections and uh, we're going to, you know, recruit some people that want to get involved with this at the ground floor so that they have exclusive areas in every state. So, uh, you know, I don't want to talk too much about that, but that's, that's what, that's what we're planning. And, uh, we have all the, uh, resources to do it. So, especially my, uh, my partner, Casey, uh, Des Hotels, <laughs> love that name in, uh, in Louisiana. He, he's down in Lafayette, Louisiana, and he owns a uh, marketing advertising group. And he's the type of guy, like he, he does, uh, his, you know, like his computer skills are every bit as good as my uh, my pool skills. And that's what I was looking for. Plus, he loves pool. He understands pool. And it, it probably took him about three days before he really, you know, the light went on about this shooter dare. And then he was excited about getting involved with it because at his level of intelligence, when he really clicked, he was like, man, this is... <laughs> This is not just a pool game, is it? <laughs> I remember him. You know, I was like, no, this is a whole nother level of uh, of pool. And it's cleverly disguised because most people, when they first see it, will, will think, well, that's no big deal. It's just six ball. No, it's not just six ball. If somebody says that, uh, you know, they're kind of exposing themselves to not have a, a high level of knowledge. Because if I was to debate anybody in the world, and I take shooter dare, and they take any other game, one pocket straight pool, nine ball, ten ball, eight ball, snooker, whatever game it is. I will debate anybody in the world, and uh, it wouldn't even be close, because I understand that game at a high level. Just like I've said before, like Buddy Hall, Keith McCready, uh, David Matlock, you know, you know, Mike Sigal, Nick Varner, you know, we all played that game and, uh, it makes you think. And that's what Tony said last night when we're, when I was playing it with, uh, Gavin, the nine year old, uh, prodigy, I should say, uh, cause he could see it. And I told him, yeah, if you start playing this game with Gavin and then combine that with the physical stuff that I showed you, He's going to have a huge advantage, and uh, man, I would I would like to bet on him the rest of his life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you know the the thing about being a pool player, like I never had a coach. If I could go back in time and coach myself from nine years old, I mean, it would have changed. You know, I would have I would have had a much 
higher level of success in, in tournaments, especially if I would have known this stuff at that young of age, because, uh, well, you know, back then the only pool on TV was like Minnesota Fats and Willie Moscone and, and Gavin has the opportunity and has taken advantage of it of watching all of these, uh, YouTube pool videos. So his little computer mind has just processed all of these great, great players. And, uh, I have to admit, I'm a little bit jealous. You know, I wish back then I would have had that opportunity because, man, I I remember waiting by the TV for uh, uh, Minnesota Fats and William Sconey to come on, and, and and that really you couldn't really learn much watching them. I mean, Fats was more of a showman, and you know, Moscone, you know, really, I've seen some of his videos. He he was an awesome player, but but. He wasn't, you know, a teacher, and some of the things that he showed, uh, and I don't fault him for it. He was, he just really didn't know what he was doing, because to to figure out what a champion player does, you know, you have to be willing to uh, sacrifice your game for a while, and most players don't want to do that and and can't because you know they'd sacrifice their income. I was in a unique position to be able to do that because I didn't have to make money playing pool. So I just was really curious what I was doing to get into uh, to these zones where I wouldn't miss a ball for hours at a time. Because, you know, at first I, I didn't know. I didn't have any idea what I was doing. Now I do. And uh, that's why it's been fun to teach people the last few years. You know, I've just understood it better and better and and right now I'm at the peak of that. So I'm, you know, transferring over to teaching the game itself through Shooter Dare. So uh, if you want to know more about that and haven't seen the uh, the videos about it, it's at ShooterDare.com. You know, there's three videos I would recommend uh, watching all of them. I show the promo video of kind of how I came up with this and what, what my... Uh, and, you know, intentions and, and, you know, why I'm sharing this with the world. Because, uh, you know, it's just the least I could do for the game. The game took me out of a little town of 629 people and, and, and showed me the world and, and enabled me to do things and, and have, a, have a life that I could only have dreamed of and did dream of when I was nine years old, when I first started playing. I started at seven years old, and, uh, you know, it's cool to to be in situations like I was last night and see somebody that reminded me of me, you know, and, and he loves the game. And, you know, afterwards, I stayed there for several hours, and Tony's wife fed me a delicious meal I really appreciated that. And Tony and I sat there and talked for several hours. And he grew up in India. And just briefly, I just want to say we had a really deep conversation. And one of the key things that that we talked about for a while is in India, they don't have a word for excellence. And we were talking about words being a secondary representation of experience. I've got a degree in neurolinguistic programming, and uh, I've studied that you know, a lot, because language always interested me. And, and you know, if you don't have a word for excellence, that affects the whole culture, because they don't, they don't have the model to strive for excellence. I mean, they're, uh, you know, as a whole. And like I said, we had a really deep conversation about that. And, and, uh, and he, you know, of course, grew up in India and until he was about 14 or 15, and it was just fascinating uh, to me because, you know, because I do believe that, you know, your uh, your words and how you think and, and your, your inner dialogue has a direct influence on your life. I know it has with me. I mean, we, we used to go through, you know, pretty rigorous uh, uh, training when I was studying this neurolinguistic program. I studied under the same ones that taught uh, Tony Robbins. Uh, their names were uh, Richard Bander 
uh, Richard Bandler and John Grinder. They wrote uh, Frogs and the Princes were the, was the first one. The Structure of Magic was the second book I read. I read uh, The Patterns of uh, Hypnosis uh, by Dr. Uh, Milton Erickson. Hypnosis is another fascinating, you know, some people have made it kind of far out, you know, where you're, you know, doing things in front of... See, this Milton Erickson only used his language to hypnotize people because he was in a wheelchair and had eight brothers and sisters, and um, so his skills were were with his uh, language, and he was able to make subconscious changes in his brothers and sisters, and then later with many, many clients, just by telling them stories and uh, through his language. And like I said, I was fascinated by that stuff. I was studying this stuff uh, when I was, I think I went through that course when I was 23, it was an eight-month course, and I took several different types of courses during that time. And uh, it was, man, I'm so glad I did. Anyway, I'm getting close to, uh, finally, my lesson. I'm going to post that video of Gavin running those uh, balls so you can see for yourself how talented this young man is. And uh, I just am so grateful to be able to uh, to have experiences like I did last night. <laughs> well, I'm in some heavy traffic. I'll uh, talk with you soon.